The US government is not only trying to contain the spread of this messy illness, but to contain the economic downward spiral as well. So if you are a US citizen, the government wants to give you money for free. But is it really free and what are the real implications of this move? Stay tuned, watch till end and make sure to like the video, so YouTube shows it to more people. Also, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell, so you'll be the first notified when a new video is released. So if you are a single taxpayer and you made less than $75,000 in 2018, you get $1,200. If you made between $75,000 and $99,000 in 2018 you get a bit less, but if you made over $99,000, then you don't get anything. If you are an American citizen and you filed your tax return in 2018 the government will send you a check. In case you're married the sum basically doubles, so if you made less than $150,000 in 2018 as a married couple you would get $2,400, but if you made over $198,000, you get nothing. According to officials if you have kids you are eligible for another $500 per kid. But why is the government so generous, you may ask. Well these checks are part of the $1 trillion so-called stimulus package, created, you guessed it, to stimulate economy. If we break down the total amount, $50 billion basically goes to bailout for the airline industry, $150 billion for other bailout of hardly hit industries, for example hotels, casinos and cruises. $300 billion are intended for loans for small businesses, so they don't go bankrupt and about $499 billion are going towards these checks, that would be sent out to US citizens. The rest of $1 billion would be for supporting low-income people, who are hardest hit by this new illness. So the government wants to give out a lot of free money, but very few people ask themselves what could be the real cost of this measure. I will try to explain this as simply as possible. We have to understand that nothing in life is for free, there are always costs to everything. The government does not have this money at this point, which means the US is spending more money than it can afford. If you think about your own money, you will immediately figure it out, that you cannot spend $2,000 if you only have $1,000. Well, you can, if you borrow the rest of the amount needed. So the US can borrow money from other countries. Two things should be noted though. Firstly, if you borrow money, you also have to pay interest and secondly, due to worldwide economic slowdown, that might not be that easy. The US is already in debt and owns about $6.5 trillion to other countries at this point. The next option of the government is to borrow money from its citizens. That is done with treasury bonds, where in exchange for your money, you are paid with a low interest. During this economic mess, that trillion is hard to raise. But there is one more step the government can make, that is to turn to the Fed, that is, the Federal Reserve. The Fed has the ability to print unlimited amount of money. That may sound great, but it's very dangerous. Just imagine, if there are many cars on the market for sale, in order to sell yours, you have to lower the price of it. It's exactly the same with printing money. If you have a lot printed, the value of it goes down. So for example if you can buy a bread with a dollar, later with that same dollar you will only afford half a bread. That is due to inflation, or as others might call it, the times, when prices keep going up, without you earning more money. The so-called hyperinflation is probably the worst thing that can happen, as I covered that in a previous video. Summing up, the stimulus package does sound as a good deal, but it comes at a great cost. When the government borrows a trillion dollars, be that from other countries or bonds or the Fed, it will have to pay that money back with interest. The US debt grows, and in the end don't forget, that the government gets their money from taxpayers, 